Hello everybody. So today we're going to be talking about heat exchangers. And basically, as the name implies, a heat exchanger just exchanges heat. Um, when we're, let's say we want to do something like heat up air using water. I'm so used to writing the word engineer. I was about to write heat engineer. I guess that's sort of what we are, right? Heat engineers. Um, basically, let's say we want to heat up like air using water, right? Um, we're gonna get something that looks sort of like this. So, we might run air through a pipe, and then we might have, so this pipe is gonna be full of air, right, running through it, and let's say we're going like in this direction, right? And then we're gonna have um, this. So let's say this is like a container holding water, right? And we're running water through this container, right? So we're gonna have an inlet and an outlet for our water, and we're gonna have an inlet and an outlet for our air. And because we're dealing with water, you might be given a P1, T1, H1. And because we're dealing with air, you might be given a, so this is P2, T2, H2, right? This is, these are both for water. This is a boundary separating the air from the water. And this might be a P3, T3, and this is a P4, T4. And what we can see here, I guess um, the odd numbers are the inlets, the even numbers are the outlets. So what we know is that Q is leaving this water and coming into the air, Q dot, right? We have a flow of heat from the water to the air because we're trying to heat that air up. Um, it's important to note a few things with heat exchangers. We're gonna look at the whole thing as adiabatic so there's no water, um, there's no heat coming in or out of the system as a, as a whole, right? But looking at um, water and air separately, there's H, there's Q dot leaving water and coming into air, right? But um, with the heat exchanger, we also know that KE and PE, there is no change in them because we're dealing with a stationary system. And there's also no work done with the heat exchanger. So, these are gonna be useful in that we, when we're applying our first law equation, we don't have to take these into account, right? So, um, first of all, I want us to look at, at what's happening with this water, right? So looking at this from the perspective of H2O, we know that we have M.1, H1, and that's the only thing going on because there's no work and there's no heat going on, right? There's no heat change, no work and everything flowing in uh, to this system. And then we have M.2, H2, and then we also have this Q dot leaving. And I'm not gonna write Q dot out, right? And I'm gonna do this, I'm doing this for a specific reason. But just know that there is Q dot out, right? Because that's on the right side, this is on our left side of the equation, right? Now, if we're looking at it from the perspective of the air, we're gonna go ahead and have, um, M dot three H three, but we're also gonna have Q dot coming in to the air, right? So we have Q dot, and that's gonna be equal to M dot four H four, right? We have M dot three H three coming in. This Q dot is also coming in, and then leaving we have M dot four H four. Um, and what do we know is a constant in this whole system? The amount of Q leaving this water is equal to the amount of Q gained by the air, right? So let's go ahead and solve for Q dot. And that's gonna give us M dot one, H one minus M dot two, H two, right? And this is gonna give us M dot four, H four, minus M dot three, H three, right? And since these two are equal, we can go ahead and equate these uh, equations, right? So we get this. Right? Now, um, what do we know here? We know that m dot one is equal to m dot two, right? Because we're dealing with a steady state system. And we also know that m dot three is equal to m dot four, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. So, 
So, uh, yeah. So, with a heat exchanger, they might ask you, what is the ratio of like water to air, right? Or they might ask you air to water. What do we know here? We know that m dot one and m dot two are both equal to the m dot of H two O because those are both dealing with water. And m dot three and m dot four are both equal to the m dot of air, right? So I can go ahead and say the m dot of water times H one minus H two, right? is equal to, huh, let, me, let me give myself a little bit more space. M dot water times H1 minus H2, right? That's gonna be equal to the M dot air, right? Times H4 minus H3, right? And this is simply because I do wanna keep writing out M dot of water m dot of water every single time, right? Um, so what we know, right? I'm sorry, that looks sort of like a four. So if they're asking us for like the m, the, the ratio of these two, right? I can go ahead and say that um, if I divide everything through, right? That's gonna give me this first, and I'm doing it. I'm not. I'm. I'm trying not to skip these steps here because it, it gets sort of um, confusing. I remember in an exam I lost some points because I, I I forgot that when you bring this down, you're not you're not just dividing through. You're gonna end up flipping some things, right? So you still end up having to bring this back down, right? And then um, we end up getting this. So the m dot h two o over m dot air is equal to h4 minus h3 over h1 minus h2, right? And um, yeah, so you might be tempted to end up, you might end up with something like h1 minus h2 over h4 minus h3. It's actually this, right? And what do we know? I'm gonna write this up here. What do we know about this? Um, we know that we're dealing with air for one, and we're dealing with water for the other. Now, this is what I was saying here, right? This is when we're dealing with water, and this is when we're dealing with air. So this H1 and H2 are actually to deal with the water, while the H3 and H4 are actually dealing with the air, right? So we can go ahead and say, since the air is what we're dealing with at the top, we know that it's, it's Cp T4 minus T3, and this, is simply still H1 minus H2. Because we don't wanna get those confused and start doing like ideal gas equations for water, right? So this is what you should end up with. And that's really all you need to know about heat exchangers. You have to look at the system as a whole, separate these two and equate them, and then you should get this. I hope this was pretty straightforward. If you didn't understand anything I said, go ahead and leave some comments in the comment section. Just say, hey, I didn't understand how you did this. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe, tell your friends, and let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.